Tell me, Buona, how do you feel? Are you excited? This is your first whitetail hunt in northwest Wisconsin, <laughs> northern United States of America. How does it feel? Um, good. <laughs> As long as you're shooting out there, you're, you'll be fine. It's the Saturday, last Saturday. Tomorrow's the last day of the Wisconsin rifle season. It's very warm, 50 degrees. So hopefully we'll get some deer coming out. How many times have you hunted before, Charlie? Zero. This is your first hunt. You've been along before, so yeah. you kind of know a little bit of what goes on. But you've been shooting your rifle. Do you remember what kind of rifle it is? No. Something 70... 7mm08. Oh. What are we going to try to shoot tonight? Mm, a doe, more likely. Doe, if a doe comes out, that's what we're kind of looking for. Little buck, would you pass it up? Yes. You would? I want them to live. Okay. Man, what if we saw a big buck? You. <laughs> Are you nervous? A little. Are you excited? How do you feel? <laughs> I don't know. Kind of both, I guess. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I remember when I was first hunting, I may or may not have, well, let's just say when I was first hunting, um, I was, everybody super excited. Like I couldn't sleep the night before, I'd wake up at like four o'clock and I'd just lay there and just so excited. And I mean, yeah, I still remember it. And I kind of feel that way sometimes. Kind of, but not not too often. It's almost kind of a little bit of a letdown, because it it almost it kind of never really gets any better than what you're experiencing right now. And I, sh I shouldn't say that. Maybe somewhere in the middle, or the first few times that you hunt, but then it like it evolves. It becomes something different. Like look at the eagle. Like when I was a kid. That would have been nothing that I would have ever paid any attention to because all I wanted to do was shoot a deer. Now, I'd probably watch the eagle and probably deer walk right past me because I'm watching the eagle, you know? Yeah. All right, here, this is already done for us. Okay, okay so what you're saying is your, your people will tell you to aim right there. Yeah. This is the lung. This will kill the deer. This is the liver. That will kill the deer. This, these are the guts. That will not kill the deer very fast. Okay, so remember how I said go straight up the leg? Mm -hmm. About halfway up, right there. See how that's right in the center? Yeah. Of everything? Yeah. Now if you shoot if you shoot forward, you're gonna hit the bone and the and deer will not. go down. If you hit it high, you're gonna hit the bone and the deer will go down. If you hit it low, you'll hit the heart and the leg and it'll go down. If you shoot left, it'll hit the back of the lung liver so and it'll like go down. It's like a big circle. Well, not yet, kind of. But that's why you want to go straight up the leg, halfway. May maybe a hair low, but halfway is just fine. Okay. And so they're telling you to shoot back here, and that's where most of them tell you to shoot. A hard shot will kill them really fast, but in my mind, that's not in the middle. Because if you, now if you shoot low and shoot right here, you won't find that deer.
What'd you think of your first day? Good. Deer hunting. Good. What did you like about it? Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of fun, just yeah. sitting there, the kind of the excitement of anything can happen. Let's not slip. Grandpa's hoping you got one. Yeah. He likes venison steaks. Yeah, I think we had a perfect deer and old doe, but just didn't have enough time and was facing us. Didn't want Charlie to take a chest shot. So, we still got time. Hopefully we'll get one next time. Yeah. Not tonight, Pa. Tomorrow night, I know where you're gonna get them. Right by your house? Golf course. Big one? There was a dozen out in the field. I don't know, I didn't know what for bucks or anything. Oh, were they pretty close? Oh yeah, they were feeding right in front of the, the so blind. Right so Gramp Grandpa scouted and scouted them out for you. <laughs> Grandpa's a good guide. Grandpa's got the spot. There was a good dozen there. I always tease my dad that his favorite pastime is telling me what to do, but when it comes to hunting, that guy's taught me most of what I know, so I've learned to keep my mouth shut and to listen. My grandpa really only knows three things. Farming, telling crazy stories, and where the deer are going to be. It's a big deer. Charlie, how do you how do you how do you describe the last forty minutes? <laughs> we literally, I mean, literally, we weren't. I, I didn't get into the stand for a minute and just. A really nice buck. Had a bunch of broken tines, but like a three and a half, probably a four and a half year old deer, comes out right there, chases the doe, and I've never hunted this stand. It's new. It's too high, so we didn't have a good setup. So Charlie couldn't get a solid rest. So what we did is we've got my binoculars, two seat cushions, and my jacket under. <laughs> but see, Charlie, remember how you said, "Well, let's just go home." Well, like. But we, we can solve the problem. We're going to make the best out of it. Charlie, I've, I've cried when I've been hunting before, too. You get frustrated, and you kind of think, oh, we put all this work in, you get an opportunity, and you fail. We learn from it, and Daddy learned from it. I, I should have had everything, you know, guiding the hunters. I've got all my gear strung out all over the place. I didn't do a very good job for that. I'm sorry. That was my fault. I should have had that, that one... Um, shooting stick that adjusts easily and I didn't have that so that's my fault so we'll see if we get an opportunity to learn the key is is we learn from it and when, when a problem arises you just do whatever you can to solve it you don't just quit the good news Charlie is he didn't uh, he didn't run away he just chased that doe off so if that doe comes back out we might get another crack Oh, Grandpa Joe, he kind of, he knows where the deer are, doesn't he? He mm -hmm. said this was the spot. <laughs> Charlie, that was a pretty big buck, wasn't it? <laughs> There's no way I'm going to get one. There's no way? Hey, now is that the end? If you believe it? <laughs> you can't <actually. laughs> I say that to you every morning when you get on the bus. 
Oh yeah, I've missed deer and I've cried before. You didn't even miss it. Just this, this is just one of those things that happened. Can you believe that? Though, like, how long was I in the stand when that buck showed up? Like it was twenty pro- seconds. It was probably out there where they were getting in. Oh, it might have been. Just standing there. Yeah, I can't believe it. All right, so we think we've got the problem solved. We've got Charlie can rest her elbow on the back of the chair. So. We'll see if we come back up and we'll try our best. The good news is none of this is life or death. Could you imagine those people that used to hunt and like if they didn't get anything, they didn't eat? That was pretty much game on, man. That was real hunting, man. Boo-boo. What did we learn? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> we learned you don't have a very good guide, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> is your daddy, does your daddy kind of throw you into some tough positions sometimes? Yeah. But you know what? You learn from tough positions. Yeah. Daddy didn't have it. Look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, Daddy is learning a lot. Uh, that's the first time I hunted in that stand. I actually lowered the floor down a little bit, so the window was too high. It was perfect for an adult, but it's too high for Charlie. And uh, I remember when I was young, not having anything to rest my elbows on. I just could never figure out how to... Um, get steady and you know what i think we need to do charlie Mm -hmm. is whatever stand we're going to hunt out of we need to shoot out of it first that's what i learned once you get experienced you'll be able to throw that rifle down and uh, get steady like in seconds but that just there's only the only way to do it is to gain experience so that's all daddy's fault so but what did you learn though you kind of learned we learned how to adapt and overcome. That's the military always says, is you got a problem, you just need to change. Make some changes, figure it out. We figured it out pretty good, didn't we? We had my bino stacked under your butt, two cushions and my jacket. <laughs> and then we almost got it done. How exciting was that to see that big buck? And you had him in your, your scope for a while. He was pretty big, wasn't he? What's buck fever like? Did you get buck fever? Yeah. What's that like? It's no fun. <laughs> you don't think it's fun? It kind of isn't. You kind of like lose control. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of addicting. I don't know. It makes it worth doing, but it, it kind of isn't fun, but it kind of is. It's stressful. Yeah. So that's good that you learned that. I love you, you nut job. <laughs> Even though that buck did not come back again, I was kind of glad he didn't. There was some doe that um, was there later that night, but I I never did feel comfortable taking the shot. And we learned a lot. I was actually really proud of you that you didn't shoot. That was the best thing you could have done. The buck coming out that soon that we weren't set up and that was an unforeseeable variable that you just can't predict. And that's the beauty of hunting is things are always gonna happen that are out of your control. All you can do is the best you can do and adapt and deal with it and overcome. So the fact that you didn't rush a shot, that showed discipline and responsibility on your part. And that's one of the best aspects of hunting is that you always wanna take a clean, ethical shot because when it's your time to pull the trigger, nobody else is responsible, only you. So you only do that when you're confident you can make a killing shot. And that balance of knowing yourself, knowing your limitations, knowing your shortcomings, and also that of others, it only comes through trial and error.
Today is December 9th and we're hunting in the fish shack for does. It's a doe only. The buck season's over and we're going for Charlie's first deer. Your first, have you shot any animals? No. No? It'll be your first animal. You feeling any pressure? You feeling better? You've got some experience now. We've had a couple of dry runs and kind of, yeah, haven't taken any shots yet, but you're ready. You're a good shot. I know when you pull the trigger, I know you'll hit it. Oh, here comes some turkeys. Just like that. Perfect segue. <laughs> Hi, Hunting in life, there's so many parallels. You know what a parallel is? You know, parallel means like going the same way. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that happen in hunting that are just like in life. And one of the things that happens in hunting is that nothing happens, nothing happens. It doesn't go the way you think. And you think, oh man, there's nothing coming, there's nothing coming. And what happens is all of a sudden, bam, there's your opportunity. And if you're not ready, like if you don't have those sandbags in the right place, sometimes that'll cost you a deer. And it's just like in life, is like you can kind of never let your guard down. You have to be diligent all the time. Because when that opportunity comes, you want to be able to make the most of it. That's, that's, I think that's some of the best things about hunting, is that you learn a ton of life lessons. And that's why I'm wanting to, you know, do this with you. Because you'll learn a lot of things, perseverance and in practice and how hard work and dedication it pays off, it'll happen. Like the one year I hunted, I've been deer hunting now for over 30 years, okay? And the two biggest bucks that I shot were 10 days apart. The biggest bow buck, the biggest rifle buck were within 10 days of each other. And so you gotta kinda stay in your lane, you don't worry about you know, some year everybody also gets a buck, like I was telling Gary. Remember how everybody got a buck and he was the last one and, like, mm -hmm. and he was getting all dejected because he wasn't seeing bucks? And I said, Gary, nobody's going to remember who shot the first one. They'll remember who shot the biggest one. <laughs> and what happened? He got his opportunity, but he missed, you know, which happens. So you got to just stay positive, stay focused, and always do your best. And just know that if you, you do that and you're learning along the way, your opportunity, whatever it is, will come. But you've got to be ready for it. Just get on the dough. I know you won't shoot it, but just get on the I, dough. I'm running on it. Okay. You just got to stay on it and follow it along just for practice. Okay. And then, like, tell me when you would shoot. Shoot. <laughs> uh, no, I think there's one behind it. They're too close together. Oh, I'm, I'm at the door. I'm not at the farm. Oh, okay. I'll get at the farm. We'll <gasps> fight. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> they look like kangaroos. Yeah, they do. They look like kangaroos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're going at it. I haven't seen that before. That's pretty cool. Look like you and Frankie most of the time. I've never seen that. Safety. Can I do it on my right? 
Yep, just right in front of the leg, right in the shoulder, right in the middle of the shoulder. Oh God, I'm too scared. To Take a deep breath. Can you load? I don't know. Wait, 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 you hit it. You hit it, it's gonna die. My ears. Yeah, it's going down. You're okay, yeah, you're ringing. Your ears are ringing a little. Yeah, the darn muzzle breaks. You're okay, yeah, it's okay. You're okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I didn't think that would ring so bad. You're okay. I just don't want to wound the Oh, it's okay, I think you got him. I think you got it. I think you made a good, good shot. I think you did just fine, Bubba. I think I'm pretty sure you made a good hit. Okay. You okay? Are you crying because of your... It, they, they don't always drop. Where do you think you were on when you shot it? Um, like where it needed to be. Yeah? Yeah? I just don't want to wound one day. I, I, I know, baby. I don't, I don't think you did. I think you made a good hit. It made a jump. It acted like you hit it perfect. Because it had its head down when it was running. The body language told me that you made a good hit. My guess is it's laying down there just barely out of sight. My ears are still ringing. Yeah, I was hoping that it would uh, not be in the building. Yeah, they're ringing. You did find there's nothing to cry about. Okay, were you nervous at all? No? I'm kind of glad that it happened fast. Yeah, you were pretty, pretty calm and cool. Did it feel good? Did you feel like you were on it when it went off? Well, then I bet you made a good shot. You didn't take you didn't take much time. <laughs> you shot pretty fast. <laughs> did, but did you feel like you rushed it? Were you no. surprised when it went off? Yep, well, that's a good sign. The way it jumped and the way it had its head down, I think I think the thing's dead already. I really do. So we'll uh, we'll go up there. We'll give it just a few minutes, and then we'll go up there. We'll uh, look, look for blood, and then we'll be able to tell right away if it was a good hit. There'll be blood everywhere. is high or low because there's a lot of fat okay and so I think the blood trail is going to do one of two things it's either going to dry up or it's going to increase or either going to probably find the deer in 200 yards or we're not going to find it at all okay. so do you, would you think you were maybe high or low which would you think probably high I think so you know, everybody misses so it's nothing to worry about and, Everybody wounds a deer, and that, I'm, I'm not convinced that that's the case yet, but we're just gonna follow it. Because I, I don't really wanna leave it overnight on the chance that it might, might meet might be okay, but I, I, I wanna find it and uh, be able to use the meat or, or try it. So I think we'll go another 100 yards or so and then kind of see what the blood tra trail is doing. Mm -hmm. My guess is it'll quickly either increase or decrease, mm -hmm. and then we'll make a decision from there, mm -hmm. okay? All right. Let me go in the lead. Yeah. I just didn't want to wound one. That's that's pretty rare for it to, there to be so little blood at first. 
But I mean, kind of see how that works. So that's, yeah. that took me 30 years to figure that out. It's like either 100 yards, we're gonna know if you got them or not. And right right from that point. And so that a lot, everybody says, when in doubt, back out. I don't believe in that all the time. Because if you leave that overnight, that meat could definitely spoil. Yeah. You know what I mean? And coyotes could come eat it and whatever. But you, you just learn as you go. Yeah. One shot, I'm proud of you, buddy. Good job. You feel a lot better now. It died really quick. And then the body language of the deer, the way it had its head down like that. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't looking good there for a little bit, was it? Let's go see where you hit it. When we replayed the footage and the gun goes off and Charlie started to cry, you know, I get it, but she was kind of embarrassed by it. Yeah, I was really nervous. Like. So just the whole thing was just kind of overwhelming like so much was so new at just one like time yeah yeah you're trying to learn 50 things at once yeah. and then and it all comes down to that moment you pull the trigger i remember when i was learning how to fly airplanes and those first five or six lessons just like hunting but maybe maybe even a little bit more you're trying to learn like 50 things all at the same time and you're trying to fit all these pieces of the puzzle together all at once and then all of a sudden things click and they start to happen and they start to come together and then that's when it gets really fun. So I was really proud of you. So the fact that you didn't quit, you just kind of worked through the fear and the, the frustration and eventually it all came together. How many months have we been kind of planning this? Well, like a new hunting? Yeah. I'm just before deer season. Well, we've kind of been talking about it for a few months and been practicing and practicing with 22s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really didn't have time to get nervous. I guess we'll pull it out over there and then we'll drag it out. You probably just Probably clipped the heart would be my guess. Yeah. So yeah, where you wanted to hit was right there. Yeah. And that's why I say aim small, miss small. You don't want to aim for an area like this. It's you want to aim hair. for right there. But hey, did the job. <laughs> that's a big deer. That's all the venison we need. We got one more at I, home. I get to pick the circle meat. Okay. All right. I like it. Yes. Both Charlie and Frankie, their favorite food is venison, specifically summer sausage. Well, yeah, when I was little, I didn't know what was sausage really. So, and my dad would cut it up in circles. So I would, I would just be like, I want some circle meat. Yeah, so I knew exactly <laughs> what she was saying and we still call it circle meat to this day. Thank you, Lord. I'm not gonna you're gonna be a, you're you're a deer hunter, Charlie. We can be loud now. Your ears still ringing? Yeah. Bubba's a deer hunter. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, not amazing how. I don't know. I don't see any other way than God put these animals on the earth to sustain us. Now, doesn't that make sense that we're going to take care of them and make sure that we don't shoot too many or, you know, if they're in danger and, or let's say there's some disease. I mean, like if you don't shoot, uh, if there's too many of them, then they, then they get diseased and then they die. Yeah. But as long as we just take kind of what we need, I, I believe that that's what God wants us to do. The Bible says to have dominion, to kind of take control over the beasts of the air and the things that crawl and all the animals and the plants. That's pretty cool. I mean, what a fun, fun way. And I believe that by hunting and understanding nature, we learn more about God. I truly do believe that because everything in nature has a purpose. Everything is connected. Like all these trees, like this tree that falls down, the deer, a lot of times they bed by those to hide. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, I mean, look at how well camouflaged they are. Mm -hmm. Man. 
That's pretty cool, and I'm proud of you, Bubba. That's your first deer. What do you think? Good. That's all you think? Good? That's it? Awesome. That's all you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, are you proud of your shot? Yeah, using the big gun? I thought I was like, I was, I thought I was like up top. Yeah. Well, you learned a lesson. It's, uh, yep, just take that extra second, and you did just fine. I think let's drag this thing out in the open. I don't like all this brush for an old man. I kind of wanted you to shoot it and have it die right in the wide open and we could just drive the truck to it. But cool. So there's a bunch of deer coming and they were eating and then it kind of stepped out for like a perfect opportunity for me to hit it. And I shot it and I felt confident about it and we were tracking the blood and it was like, couple of drops here and there and then it f stumbled a couple of times and then it was just laying under a tree that's the story yeah that's pretty basically <laughs> the story we've been out this is our third time out hunting and uh, we've we've learned a lot so i mean you see how your failures are the times that you don't get one you learn every time and you were prepared i mean how fast was it this time and so i'm proud of you you kind of stuck with it few tears along the way, but yeah, I've cried deer hunting before. So uh, yeah, do things wrong, but yeah, you did good. I'm proud of you. One shot, that's very, very, that's great. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Remember last time I was on a doe for like an hour? All these deer and I didn't even shoot. Yeah. And then I just saw this for like five seconds. And, and I think you had to go through that. And sometimes in life, it's like you're never going to have it perfectly dialed in. You, you can never like go from learning how to doing to do something to then doing it and be not perfect, but even like good at it. You've got to do it and kind of suck at it for a while and just learn. Yeah. And I'm proud of you that you just stuck with it. Good job, you little nuthead. Now, now, now you get to learn how to gut a deer. Charlie faints at the sight of blood. Actually, so well, you're getting better already. You're no, seeing more blood, blood lately. It's not blood, it's like needles. Needles and yeah. Well, you did good, kid. You got a proud dad and uh, you and Frankie, we're gonna have some buck meat. Think yeah. we'll give Chris any of it? All right, well, I was gonna say no, but I guess you're, <laughs> you're more generous than I am. My knees are cold. Yep. Okay. Well, let's get a few pictures here. So we're going to cut around the boobies. In the case of a buck, you'd cut around the penis and the and then testicles. You take the penis and you throw it up in the tree. Yep. <laughs> Is that, was that actually a thing? Oh, yeah. So how many hours would you say all the shooting at home, setting up the blinds, the two times that we were hunting before you shot one, how many hours went into you, us working together before you fired a shot at an animal? 30 hours? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say maybe like 50 or 60, like all told. But here's the thing, in that process, you learned, I learned a lot. I mean, and then in filming this, we're learning a lot. Um, but when you pulled the trigger, how easy was it? Like, pretty easy. It just kind of fell into place, didn't it? Yeah. And there's a timing in nature. Like you've, there, there's a there's a perfect timing for everything. Like I've explained to you, one thing I learned in Alaska is the the moose rut. Moose will grow uh their antlers in five months and they can grow as wide as 80 inches and then late august first of september the moose will shed their velvet and now their antlers go from being absorptive to hard and reflective and now those antlers sit on the moose's head a bull moose like this and a bull uses them to gather vibrations of a cow as she's coming into heat. She'll make a cow call, and then that sound will now hit her antlers and reflect right to, or hit the bull's antlers and reflect to his ears. And then that bull is able to hear that cow for five miles away. So there is a perfect timing in everything in nature. Those, those antlers, it, it, they're, 
Everything in nature has a purpose, everything happens for a reason, and the timing of nature is perfect. And so much of life, we try to fight timing on things, and when you're in nature, and you become part of it, and you kind of let it unfold, you can do everything right in hunting sometimes, and it doesn't work. And then all of a sudden, when the timing is right, it all falls into place. And I think that's what we kind of learned through this process is it took a lot of time, a lot of effort. We made a lot of mistakes. We learned, but we stuck with it. And eventually when the timing was right, it was all, it was almost effortless, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of amazing, but it took a lot of time to get to that point. Yeah. There's, I'm not leaving. I'll be here all night. You know, I'm stubborn. Close your eyes. No, I won't, no, not, I won't put it in your mouth. I won't. No, nope. let me, I'm going to put it on your cheeks. No, I'm going to throw it. No, on your cheeks. Come on. No, just a dot. Okay, 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 okay. Just a dot. Come on, one more. Come on, one more. Come on. No. One more. One. Dad, that's gross. No, leave it on there. We got to get some pictures with it. Leave it on there. One. It's... You're okay. lucky enough. Then let me do the other side. We got to get a picture. No. Come on. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Be a, be a trooper. I'll just put it on your other cheek. That's it, I promise. Okay. That's gross. We gotta, we gotta get there. Go, go pose for the camera and just say something like, tell, tell the world how you feel about your dad. It stinks. Just like how we have seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter, they all work together. Yeah, yeah, everything that we're learning, that we're doing, these are little seeds of wisdom and experience. And one day, all the things that we're going through are gonna serve us and you and maybe hopefully someday your kids lord willing we're learning a lot about patience and i've definitely learned that in all my years of hunting is that fighting nature is a losing battle and you won't learn that in a classroom you've got to be out there doing it day in day out and eventually the education or the objective whatever you're trying to do it will just happen naturally Nature is not a chain, nature is a spider web. As humans, our ecosystem, each and every one of us is a strand in a web. We're all connected. We all have a unique purpose. And the purpose of everything in nature is to live its life, to give life to another organism. And that's what our purpose is. If you want something new to come alive, if you want to make a change in your life, something old has to die. So often in life, you know, we see people, they, they get to some elevated position or they have something that looks pretty attractive. You think, wow, must be nice. They don't see what it took to get there. The greatest blessing, perhaps, that I had, two things. My parents taught me how to work and I was hungry.